that played on that team. What do you think of this matchup, though? We always ask you, who do you have? And this might be one of the closest matches that we've ever had. Team Secret will just barely edge out Lestream, 53 to 41%. That's certainly one of the closer ones. I think we've had a 40, 49, 51. I'm not sure if it's even possible. But I, I want to say we've had, we've come close yeah. to something like that. But it's up there, top 10 probably, and I think that's sensible. This is going to be a close match. Before we did draws, we used to just do who's going to win, which one of these two. And I think two seasons ago, I want to say in the spring, we had something like, there was like a 53-47 in Latin America, I want to say. But yeah. chat, are you ready? Viewers, are you ready? We have our final match of the day on coastline and we'll load on in and start off the ban process also since i have your attention the north american six invitational qualifiers end tonight in just a matter of hours we've made pretty quick time so far in large part to ents versus g2 and well we're likely gonna have a bit of a break but then at 2 a.m in Central Europe, 8 p.m. Eastern and 11 p.m. Brazilian summertime, you have the conclusion where one of the remaining three teams, Rise Nation, Rise Nation, Orglis, uh, Rise Nation, Orglis, and Space Station Gaming will be uh, the three remaining teams. It'll come back to us for just a second, and then we'll go back into the game with a Capital Pulse Band and you see an Ash, and we'll wait to see what Lestream is going to ban as well. So we're unsure exactly what the problem is right now, but the ban phase looks like it's going to continue to play out. And um, Mira. Looks like it's going to be, yeah. So Ash, Mira, Capital, and Pulse as our bans. That is probably the most diverse ban phase we've had in terms of, like, the typical and not so much. I mean, Capital way out of uh, way out of left field ash makes sense against some teams um like for example empire yeah uh, pulse is a little bit of an odd one uh mira makes mira is the only standard surefire ban in that uh in that pool so that's really interesting to see uh happen here uh especially in a match like secret versus the stream yeah capitao and ash is this capitao's first ban i I, maybe not ever, but not this, ever. But this, this season, season maybe. this season, I think it might actually be Capitao's first uh, first ban. This is solid, probably. Parker, I didn't see. He, I don't think he was one of the top ten most played attackers. So I don't think so either. Um, he's generally. Um, I'm trying to think on that one. He's generally kind of a, a surgical pick. You know, you really need to have some specific purpose behind picking Capitao. So clearly, Team Secret is aware of some sort of specific purpose that Lestream would yeah. bring a Capital on this map, and they don't want to deal with that. You can do an entire team of three speeds on attack, by the way, if you look at Ash, Hibana, IQ, Capital, and now Maverick being added to the mix. So you've taken two of those out of the equation. Lots of fragging potential. Even though you're not really going to use Capital as a fragging role, you can possibly use him there in a pinch. We've seen players use his utility and then slap a hollow or a reflex on there and just go buck wild. Mm -hmm. But no, the Ash is a pretty good pick, uh, all things considered, as well. So, I mean, pretty smart. You're going to take Uno off that Ash. He's not going to be able to play it. That's severely going to impact Lestream's ability to frag well, especially on a map like Coastline, where hard breachers aren't brought. Keep that in mind, too. Yeah, that's totally fair. I, I think uh, the emphasis on the, um, the actual fragging potential is always going to be prevalent on this map and getting rid of ash makes sense for because of that but uh, there's still plenty of i think in my mind uh rotation options like yeah. iq is still in play and iq mm -hmm. is another one of those operators that's borderline essential on a map like coastline especially if valkyrie is still available um we also still have uh both echo and maestro which means uh, iq is going to be really helpful in locating those yokais and finding out where the evil eyes are so someone else can destroy them. Uh, just in general, I think we're probably going to see IQ most of these rounds now because of the way these bands played out. Yeah. So we'll see. I would imagine that your attacking lineup is probably going to look something like maybe a Glass. You might bring a Hibana yeah. just in a pinch. Glass. Uh, Hibana does have fragging potential as well. Keep that in mind. The Type 89 and the bearing aren't terrible. IQ is likely a must. Sophia is going to be a must. I would imagine probably... A Ying to some degree. I mean, um, this is the first match today where Glass hasn't been banned. So yeah. if we don't see him, it would be kind of uh, unfortunate. So weird. predictions predictions probably like IQ, Jackal, Dokabi, Glass, maybe Ying, maybe, well, that would be, maybe Hibana. 
that would be a, just a, a lot of fun to deal with. Oh, such fun. Was it the words you were going to say? Yeah, that's that was the, yeah, those those were the words, words I was going to say. say, too. Yeah, you put your IQ underneath, destroys the ADSs, yeah. then... Oh, buck. Uh, buck as well. Yeah, you put the buck underneath, buck destroy the ADSs, mm -hmm. then the rest of the attackers just wreak absolute havoc yeah. on the site. Or uh, above or underneath, wherever the site is. I could see I could see Buck, IQ, and Zofia having a really heavy pick rate over the however many rounds that we're going to have. At minimum, seven of these 12. So that's something that I suspect at least. And maybe a, maybe a Twitch, too. And look at that. There's a Twitch right on the board. There's a Buck and an IQ there and Lestream bringing oh. a shield. All right. We so, forgot about Monte. Well, I mean, I knew. Oh, I didn't forget about shields. I just thought that, I mean, we haven't really seen shields day outside of Corey we, on that Blitz. Uh, We saw... We saw a Montane band today, and I mean, that was in the pen. It was on Coastline, but that was also directly to counter Hungry. At yeah, that time. I think specifically. Yeah, but but also Hungry got to play Ying because of that. So I mean, uh, I don't know. It, it's actually going to be a six pick off of the shield for the attackers, and a six pick into the shield for the defenders. So a little bit of a swap of the roles there between the stream and Secret. Interesting how that worked out. That's going to be we're going to be uh, looks like going to Bill for the first round. You stop calling it Bill, Michael. Fine. Parker. You're not on a first name basis with the site. And it looks like we're just waiting for Lackey to load in. This sometimes happens. Hopefully he will. I don't know if they're still at their boot camp or not. I, I actually don't know either. Secret was at a boot camp as of a couple days ago. They were boot camping with the intention of it helping them try to get to Six Invitational. Unfortunately, a boot camp is not a... Uh, it was good, Steezy. Thank you for asking. Yeah. I wish I could ask for your... Uh, it's great. I've had a good day. Ask how, how you? your day was, but you can't hear Attackers us. Yeah. It was good, yours. There you uh -huh. go. See, look at that. I love how they're talking to each other on their team as if they don't have each other in voice chat. So, uh, also, keep in mind, this Capital ban that came out is also going to mean that you can play Clash. Interestingly enough, maybe we'll run Clash right away. Her pick rate has bottomed out quite a bit ever since her changes. We've seen her a little bit today. We have seen her a little bit today, and I suspect that we're going to see her actually quite a bit more if these changes in the TTS go live. So for those that don't know, on the test server, Clash is uh, Clash is getting changed. So her gun is uh, going to be a little bit more powerful, and her two-shot burst SMG, yeah, it's becoming full auto. So yeah, no one's ever going to use the pistol ever again, basically. Yeah, the pistol, you might as well take the pistol off. Yeah, it's going to be an SMG. Uh, that's... Uh, I mean, it's gonna be interesting. I'm not gonna. I don't want to call it too soon. I haven't used it yet, so I'm not gonna make any prediction on that. Again, this is the TTS, so uh, still potential for that to be changed or altered in some way. We, we'll see. Default camps are gonna be shot out here by Lestream, and they're gonna start moving their way towards what looks to be an aquarium take. They're already stacked up pretty heavily on the south side. You can expect Buck to actually. I was gonna say go downstairs, but he's already in aquarium. You can see he's just seizing the opportunity here. Uh, his nade will be very useful at taking out that uh, evil eye. There is no Jaeger on defense right now, so that's actually going to hurt the defense quite a lot if they continue to uh, avoid bringing the Jaeger, especially considering how many of those amazing uh, throwable operators there are in, available, such as, the, such as the Glaz and the Ying. Neither of those have been picked here, but they are available for the stream should they decide to bring them later on. There's not going to be, really, honestly, outside of Hicks's disruption, there's not going to be a lot of opportunities to take out this clash. First kill is going to go to Leon Gids. He unsheaths the SMG-11 as the mutant takes down the Doka B. It's a really good kill to have early on. No yes. Sm smoke's taken out, and uh, that's huge. There go your smokes. Leon will pick up his second on Alfama. Steezy with his own SMG-11 through a punch hole, looking for yet another kill onto Uno as he... Pushes on over just outside of the range of what appears to be an evil eye inside of Aqua. Uno finding Steezy though. That's your smoke down. Leon also very low, so both of these British operators in bad shape for the time being. 90 seconds eclipsed in the very first round here. You know, the stream in tricky spot. They got a little bit ahead of themselves trying to push into Aquarium. And on top of that, maybe don't have the best lineup for an Aquarium push, especially considering they lost their smokes early on. That's probably the toughest blow they could have taken. The smokes, though, were pushing downstairs. Doka B is dead in the southern lobby, not in Aquarium, which is kind of interesting. Not exactly the ideal position for that player. Good flank hold here from Hicks to uh, deny the mute to come from underneath and lay down that potential C4. And it looks like Lestream are somewhat fighting back. I mean, they still got a very lit up 
buck, and that's going to Attackers be hard to win a fight for Rise, but he could still do some work for his team before he eventually dies. No nades, but still plenty of skeleton key. If he comes from underneath, he can dislodge some roamers, or sorry, anchors. And he's going to have Meepy to work on as well. Most teams, when they have a clash on the board, will deliberately design their defense around the fact that you want to keep her alive till the very bitter end. Figuring out the plan is Hicks trying to dry out Lackey, and the MP7 will not connect successfully, and Hicks will grab the very first kill of this site execute, but with the Alda LMs will punish a member of LSE. Down goes Hicks, and Rise will be left swinging. He gets a big kill onto Alems, and we'll have to find Meebee, but oh no, it's a clash! He's got two seconds, he's gonna need to go for the plant. The withstand from Hicks, what a brilliant move, and there's Rise holding Meebee off not expecting the Zofia with her very unique ability to get right back up. It's a force of wills, Michael, and the will to live and the will to win will prevail this time with Lestream taking round number one. I remember when um, Zofia was first announced and it was like, withstand, that's crazy, it's gonna be super overpowered, blah, blah. And then for the initial Zofia launch, withstand was barely a factor most of the time. But we have since then seen so many rounds <laughs> clutched out because of Zofia will withstand. Specifically in Pro League. I'm talking about Pro League. I'm not talking about general play. Yeah. There's a lot of instances where the Zofia is able to clutch around because of that withstand. If you're unsure what just happened, you might be th saying, what are you talking about, Kicks? The Buck was the one to get the final kill. The Zofia was the one to pick up the Diffuser and plant it on 0, zero, zero. And if you're new to uh, CG Sports, Defenders you might not know this. When you're planting the Diffuser, the timer stalls. So if you go past zero, it'll just continue until that Diffuser either gets planted or is denied. And in this case, it was planted because Zofia withstood. For those that don't know what withstand is, it's an ability that is unique to Zofia, where she uses her literal powers as a uh, force of will, a force of will, as a strong Polish operator, to literally pick herself up off the ground when they're down but not out. If she did not have that ability, there is no universe in which the stream wins that round. Yeah, because you don't have the buck able to take the frag. The only reason why Rise was able to swing in and pressure the shield was because he knew that the plant was going down. If it's just a one v one between that clash and the buck, what happens is Rise doesn't take the fight. He just runs to go grab the diffuser, tries to plant it, at which case either Rise will have to fall off the plant or maybe just switches to the burst SMG and, and kills him and then they plant. Yeah, That's it. Secret wins that round. Yeah. So, uh, and to elaborate on the withstand, it's only Zofia who can do that. Just to be absolutely clear if you're unfamiliar. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's the story of that round. Well played to the stream. They brought a little bit of it. They're bringing a little bit of an unconventional lineup, in my opinion. I think they have some tools available to them that they're not utilizing. Uh, but uh, at the same time, they're making it work, and that's all that really matters in the end. Uh, Team Secret, same thing, though. Very unconventional. Still forcing that clash into play. It did work out fairly well. All things considered, the clash was pretty useful for Secret in that last round. Uh, it was truly unfortunate that they didn't win it. It did seem like a, a team secret uh, round, but it just, in the end, was not. Yeah, it, it literally falls on a withstand there. That's it. Because withstand is why Meepy had to pull off his gun. Withstand is why Rise went in and took the fight instead of going for the plant. And that's really what it boils down to. That single ability just won the round for Lestream. So we transition in here to round number two, and Alems has been found out. They're going to try to hunt him as the Jaeger will roam as far away as he can. It's a kitchen defense for Team Secret, and well, they're gonna lose their very first body. Leon Gids gets spotted, and oh no, Maestro is the very first operator that you lose. That's tough. Yeah, Leon, unfortunately so far, not able to get the frags that so characteristic of him. Absolutely fantastic fragging machine, but caught out of position, it seems. CZ also gonna need some damage, and Team Secret are not in a good spot right now as CZ goes down on the floor and will be finished off by Hicks as he just tries to peek onto the delivery door which is a dangerous angle to play. Lackey coming back to site because there are no anchors right now, and he will be joined by Meepy as they attempt to retake their own site. The stream hasn't taken full control, but it's not gonna matter. I mean, they're just going for frags. They're playing this safe. They have a whole minute. They don't need to rush themselves in a two versus five. They're gonna dish out the phone calls. Lackey eating some damage, but dishing out a little bit of his own, forcing himself back into bathroom, but he's gonna be taken out by aces in that transition, leaving just Meepy in an unwinnable situation. The grenade from Rise will finish him off in the stream, an absolutely dominant round.
They played that really perfectly to be able to take control of service. And the biggest problem with Clash is that if you can't keep people around her alive and you can't keep her hidden and safe until the final 30 seconds, then that utility from the attackers will be used to finish her off. Or you end up in a position where you're essentially harmless and extremely vulnerable to the remaining members of that team. When you've got frag grenades on the board, you've got disruption, you've got smokes, there's no way that Clash is coming back from a 1v4. I wonder if we're going to actually see Meepy Flex off of the Clash here. A locker in, so a bit of a surprise. No six pick coming out from either team. Hmm. And we'll just stand pat on these lineups. i got to give credit to Lestream. They've really found their groove the last little while. This was a team that had quite a bit of a buzz, picking up Uno and then adding Alfama to the team. They come in with a loss to Ents, as we noted, trying to work some things out, and then running up the score on Penta and Mocking. The stream also had a disappointing showing at DreamHack Winter, which was the first opportunity to see this lineup in action, and I mean, it's not really that much of a surprise. After EG debuted their new lineup, they struggled at DreamHack Montreal. Rogue debuted their new lineup at DreamHack Montreal and actually did quite well despite the substantial roster changes, picking up both Shuttle as well as Super at the time. But a lot of teams will need some uh, time to work out the kinks, and it looks like Lestream is finally realizing the potential that a lot of people in this region thought that they were capable of. Good fragging potential backed up by good support work. I will say for Secret though, I'm very surprised with how almost conservative they're playing. Yeah, and one thing I've noticed about Secret is, okay, yeah, they did manage to beat G2. But a loss against Penta and Empire, and now we're early on in this match, but losing two rounds to the stream. The first one was close. The second one, not even a little bit. Clearly, Team Secret need to rethink how they defend Kitchen. But what I was trying to get at there is Team Secret in the last season looked like one of the top teams in Europe. Absolutely fantastic play from them. I mean, they had a little bit, a few hiccups, but it was looked at as something that has easily worked past on the Team Secret side. This season, so far, they have not had the best start, and it's gonna take them some work to recover from these early losses. That's free on Nesteezy, who doesn't realize that there's a buck beneath him, and Rise with an excellent heads-up play and a pretty common spot onto the smoke, positioned between the divider wall of Hookah all the way over towards Billiards. Uno will find a Lems as there's another peak, and well, there's aggression here in spades for Secret, but it's really not paying off. Both members of Secret that have gone down are your primary anchors, your Smoke and your Maestro. Tons of plant denial and really good post-plant gadgetry that is going to be lost on Secret's side of things. Leon Gid's also absorbing a bunch of damage. Uno will get a reset. And we're in a holding pattern as we wait for the mid-round to start to warm up with 90 seconds left. The Clash is going to add a little bit of time denial to Secret's side as a solo operator. So while the stream is at a significant man disadvantage, the Clash is going to be very useful at recovering from that in a sense. Ace is, is doing a little bit of parkour and has managed to work his way up onto the ruins in an odd position. Leon going for a run out there is not able to find any targets. Looks like he might have done some damage to Uno, but not enough to be lethal. Lackey is left alone to hold the site as uh, his teammate Meepy is trying to hold down those blue stairs. Rise is also completely out of frag grenades, so any real combat that he's going to have here is he knows there's a body behind him, almost manages to catch it on a Leon as Leon swaps out the SMG for the shotgun, pumps Rise up, and then pulls the SMG back. Hicks doesn't have any gadgetry either at his disposal, and Alfama will fall to a great C4 from Leon Gids. Secret recovering great. Lackey with a C4 of his own will now put Team Secret in the driver's seat as Meepy felled. I'm not sure if that was from the same C4 or not. No logic bombs left, no gadgetry from the Zofia, but two very swift kills will leave Lackey as the sole member of Secret. Watching this punch hole and just waiting for a head to appear in his crosshair. The hollow, Lackey still in position, but oh no, a great smoke tossed out from Lestream. Will essentially excise Lackey from the site. He knows that there's a defuse going down somewhere. He can hear it, a common pre-fire, but he'll give his position away. Choked off again by a secondary smoke. He will just narrowly miss the Dokubi of Aces. As Aces ducks towards the ground. Working against the timer now with a quarter of it gone. Lackey is a great weapon in his hand at three speed, but he himself also starved of utility. Spending his C4 earlier on. One body on repel and another watch in the doorway means that a perfect crossfire will be established. If Lackey decides to go through the doorway towards Hookah, but he'll try to vault through the wall, which is exactly where Aces is seated, and a very simple sound cue. The pitter-patter of the feet abandoned. We'll have Lestream get the intel they need. And it's a very easy cleanup after the diffuser goes down.
I gotta say, Lackey played that well. He really did. And Listerine played it better. What really ended up happening there is Lackey was in a great position to pick off one of those remaining two attackers. And from that, he could have put it into 1v1 and clutched it. We know Lackey is capable of that. But the smokes. Oh, the smokes. So well placed, able to deny that angle and force the bandit to reevaluate. Had full coverage of not only the site, but also parts of the hallway. Overall, excellent job to Lestream to get control of that site. And that's all despite the uh, Clash, who was doing a pretty stellar job of holding on to blue and site simultaneously. Attackers if the Clash had had the support of uh, one of the gunners from uh, Team Secret, I think that we would have seen a different round. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Team Secret really know what they're doing with the Clash. As much as the individual Clash play has been good, I don't think the team play has worked Clash into it as a whole. So, because of that, or many other reasons, possibly the fact that they've lost three in a row, Team Secret are going to decide to rotate away from the Clash and bring a full gun lineup. And also move us to Double Bar, a site that they have yet to defend. They're trying their best to salvage some rounds on the defense here for Coastline. Important to remember that Coastline has historically been one of the more attacker-favored maps. But at the same time, these rounds have seemed so... It just seems like the stream's momentum has never stopped halted. I mean, two of them were pretty close, though. That last round was somewhat close in the round with the Clash and the Buck in the 1v1, essentially, with Zofia getting the defuse down, was also close, too. Right, but at the same time, I mean, in the one versus two there, I was thinking, okay, maybe Lackey can win this. It was the smokes that really secured it for the stream. After the smokes went down on Lackey's angle, it was done. The two smokes were beautifully placed. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it essentially cut off any push that would come in onto Lackey, basically forcing him into a position that he would not be able to win from because those smokes also bought Lestream time to set up that crossfire, which was the rappel out on the window and then the body inside a hookah looking towards the doorway. So, all right, Look double that. bars. <laughs> this, uh, oh! <laughs> I mean, read him like a book, Michael. That's exactly what you anticipate happening. Yeah, he droned them out and he saw them in the middle hole and he shot them. No matter how many holes you make, you cannot be static on them. That's dangerous play there from Leon who, has yet to show us the theatrics we're used to seeing from him. Especially when he pulled off against G2, essentially yeah. running rampant over them all over the map. So an opening frag for Lestream comes in the first 60 seconds, and one Logic Bomb will try and determine what? the positions of the defenses. No way that Aces should have won that one, but he'll take it, and Secret are just collapsing right now. Lackey not bothering to silence his phone in a position here in the last man on his team as Hicks finds Steezy and Secret are getting so unlucky in these gunfights. That was a shotgun blast that did not work. A C4 gets tossed out, it will not down anybody. But through the courtyard wall, Lackey will finally get a kill, but it's impactless. As Lestream were able to cover every other part of that site. And Alfama credited with that very final kill. Four in a row for LSE, and they are tantalizingly close to guaranteeing themselves at minimum a draw. I don't want to say this, but that that fight that Aces just won in Kitchen really solidifies it. Secret right now are struggling to get the basics down. Uh, and from from the base, baseline, I'm talking about gunfights. Um, I, I really don't know how Aces won that fight. He shouldn't have been able to. Uh, just no, you absolutely said. not. That uh, was puzzling. Very strange. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, uh, Secret doing a pretty solid job of, I mean, setting themselves up. But then whenever confronted, the stream just seemed to win, no matter what. I don't know. It's it's really hard to analyze because again, a lot of it just seems like, yeah, strategically, Secret are doing things that, okay, they make sense. They're in decent positions. These should give them, you know, this play should give them an advantage. I mean, that Jaeger was in a really great position, able to catch Aces off guard. Uh, Leon in Kitchen, he set himself up well with that wall. But they both made misplays. Jaeger's was he missed his shots. Leon's was that he stood still. Now, I I really don't know. Leon's been reading too much Reddit. Just stand still. <laughs> yes. There is no line, Kappa. There is, there is no line. He, he cannot be played. But yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure what's going on with Team Secret. This it, It's almost reminiscent, actually, of the match we had earlier today, uh, Ents versus G2, where you're looking at G2 and you're saying, that's not G2, what is that? And it's the same thing right now with, with Secret. And it doesn't look like Secret. And, and it's been the same thing, though, for this whole season. They beat G2, sure. But apart from that, what is that? Because it's not Team Secret. It's weird to see the transition here 
uh, from season to season. Yeah. I would imagine that we're probably going to see Secret get really aggressive and, and brainless, I suppose, is the way to describe it. But it actually looks like Secret is probably getting more passive, which isn't really working out for them, at least I mean, so far. We've seen that be the call that teams will make when they start losing a lot. But I, I find I, we find often that it is not the right one. We need to play more conservatively. Let's turtle up. Well, it doesn't work on certain maps. It certainly doesn't really work on Coastline, where map control is so important. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're trying to defend sites like Kitchen and Bar, both of which require you to keep hold of that second floor. Bar is usually your best shot at successful defense, at least so far, just in terms of raw numbers. They're going to burn that ADS and a frag grenade goes in, and mysteriously, Lackey will survive, at least for the time being. There's no Jaeger on the board, so these are essentially going to be free, and Lackey will lose about 50 HP, but not the most efficient use of those frag grenades on Ryze's side of things. I would suspect there probably wasn't a drone on Lackey at that point to know how far back he was, because if not, Ryze probably wouldn't have cooked him quite so long. Alem steps up, and down goes Aces. Logic Bombs and the lone set of smokes from LSE will be lost for the remainder of the round. That's a really good kill to have early on, but we've seen this before. Aces going down and the smoke's gone. That was the first very, very first round on the very same site. Last time, Lestream was able to clutch out thanks to that Sophia withstand. This time they still have that as an option, though it's unlikely to be the actual winning play a second time in a round. Uh, a round. Good reinforcement there from the defense. Uh, means Alfama's not gonna be able to land the shot through the wall as the marks start to come out. Steezy and Alem's both stacked up on those blue stairs. Very dangerous. Leon is the only person that is keeping Secret alive on Coolbot stairs right now. And if there's a pressure, if there's pressure at all onto him from above or even through delivery, we could go really bad, really fast. Hicks shredded once again, that Alda of Alems finding a second target. And Uno eliminates Alems, which means that that's where his killing streak will end. Rise from above, very close to this A-bomb site, but the bandit is repositioned, now hugging the door very close. Oh, what a shot from Steezy. A beautiful flick will down Rise, and Secret are in the best position to take a round. Another one from Steezy there, but he will be silenced from Alfama as the Frenchman taken out by the Englishman. The bread of Lackey will find the kill and Secret will be able to pick up a round. It will come as Secret very close to switching sides. A 5-1 victory for LSE here would be monumental on attack, but nothing outside of the norm. A 4-2 scoreline is what we often see on these heavily skewed maps, especially on coastline with the attack the way it is. Yeah, even teams will give us the 4-2. Yes. So we'll see if Secret is able to give us that 4-2. That last round, oh boy, I mean, a complete lockout of Lestream. Every single thing they were trying to get there or get done there was unsuccessful. I mean, wh whether it be trying to nade onto the uh, billiards, uh, uh, pardon me, bar, or trying to push into hookah. The, it's curious the way they were trying to take hookah as well. I, that's Pushing through the doorway amidst the gas canisters is not necessarily a viable strategy. They didn't have any tools to dr help disrupt. They were reliant on the, um, the Dokubi who died first thing uh, in the round. That's the second time we've seen that from Aces. I gotta say, um, either Aces needs to find a different role, or he needs to play his role differently, because, I mean, he keeps dying early on, and it's one of the more utility-heavy, I mean, uh, let me look at this. It's probably the most utility-heavy operator that Lestream has been commonly bringing. This time around, they're gonna be bringing a Montane, yes. and it's a little bit of fun there from Aces. Uh, but yes, the Montane means they're going to be doubling up on those smokes. That makes me want to say a delivery or service entrance attack. We'll see. It's very likely, considering that current lineup from the stream. We're attacking onto Kitchen. We've been here before. Last time we were here was the second round, and the stream were able to take this. It was actually the most decisive round we saw from them. Yeah. Scanning. Station. All right, for Kitchen, Secret obviously think that an Alibi and a Vigil will do them quite well. This is a very mobile lineup from Secret that we're going to see, too. It's interesting because they've been bringing Maestro, but they're not going to bring Maestro on Kitchen of all sites. I, mean, I, I think it's because they realize that if they need a Maestro, which he usually excels in the final 30 seconds of a round, they can't get there on this site. I get it, but at the same time, service entrance plan. And look at what we're dealing with right now from Lestream. It's a Montane and a Dokubi. Yeah. That just screams service entrance plan. And you can see they're setting up for that right now. I will say that Aces is nowhere near the site, though. That's a little interesting. There's not really all that much that can burn Wait the ADSs either. There's nobody playing service entrance right the second. There's nobody in sight except for Steezy, it looks like. Leon, Leon Gids has retreated to bathroom, but is there somebody above? That's the real question here. Mm -hmm. 
He just came back from the main lobby just now. And Leon Gids is softened up, and Ix is not that far from the doorway. There is an, ED an ADS in play, so they will need to clear that out at some point. The, v the throwables that we see on the stream side of things are incredibly valuable, and they don't really have a way to burn that ADS. They're going to require the Twitch to tase it, because if they don't, well, then you lose your smokes. And Aces, speaking of, will lose his. You're going to lose the Dokubi. Uno is able to outfrag Meepy after taking quite a bit of damage inside of Sunrise Bar. And Hicks just wandering right in. We'll know that there's only two bodies on site. This is information that could be provided to LSE if they've done their homework. Excellent encounter from Rise there is through the pottery. He's able to eliminate Alems and Secret find themselves trailing yet again in man count. Leon Gids going to be the linchpin for this defense, along with Steezy to hold that Montaigne at bay as we come down to the last minute. The Fuser's going to start needing to get planted. Uno will get his second there. Long angle all the way from the Sunrise Bar. Not sure what Steezy was thinking trying to peek that, but he has just been eliminated as the solo deny plant on that shield. I mean, gas grenades not available. It's going to come down to the smokes here from Hicks to get that plant down. He can't get the... The vigil of Leon Gids, but that's not too terrible as uh, he still has the control which is necessary. No ADS there from Ryze means no kill. Leon though on low HP and he's gonna go for a spray and land the headshot onto Alfalma, but one right back at him from Hicks and it's just Lackey to try and keep us in a 4-2 here. But with the stream all lit up, it's still very possible. That MPX doesn't do a lot of damage, but doesn't need a lot of shots. And the high rate of fire is going to be definitely a great tool for him in this round. He vaults and denies the... No, he doesn't! Too slow there from Lackey. He does a double take and misses the actual denial. That means Montaigne's still in play. This is borderline unwinnable, especially considering the Nitro Cell has been expended from Lackey. He cannot kill this Montaigne in that situation. It would have to be a huge misplay by Hicks for them to lose this. He's gonna go for Uno though. Predicts the location but misses all the shots Defender and the Twitch covered. is still alive. Uno not going for frags there. That's a great decision on his part. Hicks just faking it out. He doesn't Defender need to commit as he knows the Valkyrie operation. cannot commit herself. <laughs> and this is just gonna be an absolute heartbreak for Lackey. It'll be a 5-1 out of the first half. <laughs> and it's the Twitch drone. I was gonna comment, I don't know if you heard it. He got tased four times by the Twitch drone while Uno sat out there and just followed Lackey around and with pinpoint precision, was able to take down the Valkyrie. A very shrewd play, I want to say. Very, very shrewd, and it ends up working out very well. And that's a 5-1 as we transition to the second half. Excellent start from Listream. Shrewd, yes. Smart, also yes. I mean, it was... Diabolical. A, diabolical is a great word to use to describe the way that Listream played that round. And honestly, it seems like that's the best way to describe their play overall. Uh, Listream, in terms of... you, uh, In terms of... This is going to sound weird, but in terms of game knowledge and game sense, Lestream seems like, to me right now, to be the best team we've seen play this season. They've been having, like, almost all of the decisions Lestream is making in the late game are the correct ones. I will say, Attackers need to locate and Aces needs to either play a different operator or try a different, like, way to play the game, as in, like, going somewhere else, maybe, you know, fulfilling a different role. Because as Dokubi trying to roam clear, he has been getting killed consistently early round. That said, it's not going to matter anymore because we're going to transition to the second half. The stream will be now on defense, and uh, this is where their real challenge begins. As we've noted, Coastline, one of the typically attacker-sided maps. One of the few, actually, especially in this meta. Yeah. It's, I think it's just the map really more than anything. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, I really I really think it's the map. It was a very smart ban from Lestream to take out Pulse as well. That's Lackey's comfort pick operator for many seasons. And it's vital info that is passed on to the rest of his team. Information largely seemed to be absent from Secret for many of those rounds. Vitalin. Yeah. Foe. Vitalin? Yeah, Vitalin. From, from Chaos. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking about him when he said that. Slow take into Aquarium here from Secret. This is one of the more shallow parts of the defense on Coastline. And Secret is going to be rushed, actually, by Ryze, who will get the down, but not the kill. Elem's an excellent recovery there, and Steezy will also eliminate Uno. The aggression from Lestream not paying off in this round, and even more so as Steezy gets his second onto Alfalma. Team Secret now in absolute control as the stream is stuck in a two versus five and their cameras have been hacked with full utility still available to see team secret on top of that secret has finally brought 
the unbanned glass. Excellent decision there on their uh, on their part. Aces will get the first kill. Hicks, though, two for himself, and we're in a 2v2! What happened? Secret is planting the diffuser just narrowly in sight. The spray, though, from That's Hicks correct. is narrowly missing his shots. Leon will shut down Aces finally. Hicks now in a decent position, all things considered, much better than it once was. As he slow peeks his way into Aquarium, he's looking for the kill, but Team Secret playing just as shrewd as the stream was in the previous round. Phone call is going to disrupt Hicks, and the hacked Evil Eyes is going to give away his intent. Going for a stick, likely just faking it out. His knee exposed, and Leon will get the final kill. It all seemed to be going well until I took a bullet to the knee. <laughs> I, I was an operator like you. Until I took a bullet to the knee. Good job to Secret there in that round. Um, a lot of it comes down to the aggression that Lestream were trying to force on the south balcony. Mm -hmm. And despite that, though, almost a comeback there from Lestream. Very, very close. Well, they lined up for Hicks, to be fair. They did, they did. But and still. that gun is just so... Balda? Oh, it's the best gun on defense. Borderline, one of the better guns on attack if you were to switch it over. We're not going to do this again. We're doing it again. We're not doing this again. It's a great gun. On attack? I think it would be a good gun on attack. I think it's just a generally good gun. I think it doesn't just have to do with the ammunition count and the fact that it has an ACOG on defense. I think it High damage, great rate of fire, insane amount of ammo, has an ACOG. I also think the recoil ammo. is one of those things that... Really manageable. ...often overlooked. Really manageable, but still exists. Because you don't always want a laser beam. Laser beams are really great, like Doc and uh, Rook. Fantastic to have that MP5, because you're just going to land the headshots nine times out of ten. Yep. But if you have really bad aim, as many people do... And you can bring an operator like Ash, for example. Attackers the reason the R4C is so good is because it still kicks. Can. It still jumps up. You're going to get a lot of random headshots with a gun like an R4C, a gun like the F uh, F2. You know, there's a lot of different weapons out there that have a little bit of a uh, recoil, but still manageable enough where they're going to kick up to the head. You're going to get some random headshots, and you're going to feel much better about yourself because of it. Yeah. I'll so, one of those guns. I, I mean, the Alt is in a position right now where I would not be surprised if at some point we see some... Uh... Nerf hammer get, get taken out. I wouldn't be surprised either, Park. I would not be surprised. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Lestream is very close to being able to grab one point out of this interaction here with Secret. It's going to be uh, not an insurmountable task for Secret, but they've got a lot of work ahead of them. Yeah. Teams can be able to come back very fast when they are trailing, though. So, it's definitely doable. I don't know if Uno is actually going to go for the spawn peak here. He's surveying the cams, but there's nobody out there. The oh, he's so close. I really like that peak. And he'll come back in? Better yeah. to play it safe. Just waiting so patiently. Oh, back, to, back to Hookah we go, and <laughs> map control, I think, is going to need to be really important for LSE here. So they cannot give things up as early as they did. No. Definitely not going to be good if that happens. Not, uh... The stream starting themselves off on the north balcony. So they're, or rather, Secret starting themselves off on the north balcony. The stream going to try and counter that play from the north balcony. Secret is coming at this from a different angle, uh, despite having won it the last Defender time around. Afama is going to punish them. Looks like a run out possibly from the uh, top of main stairs window. He will come back in through the main lobby door. Good run out there from the castle to take out Zofia. Very, very valuable pick. Yeah, definitely. And it was indeed an impact run out from the top of main stairs. Now, I mean, with Aces playing on the Jaeger, there's going to be ADSs put down. You can see all three of them are. And there's going to be tons of valuable throwables that Zofia could help clean up. Hicks on a rampage over the last two rounds. And even though he was silenced at the end of the previous one, will continue on his killing ways. This time he'll find the Dokubi, and one set of smokes from Secret will be off the board, leaving the Glass to push in with his. Luckily for Secret, Glass still has both of them. Dokubi only had one left, so Meepy had burned one. Aces will jump on Steezy, and well... Secret, just at the moment, oh. nowhere near one another. The only two members of Secret who could possibly refrag one another are the two remaining members. Oh, what a shot from Alems all the way downtown on the Aces. And that tiny, narrow hole that was punched in the wall. And the Jaegers had surely a big enough target to find. Lems though, has been lit up. Took a bullet there from the Jaeger, or possibly two. He's going to be in a tricky position because of that. So he pushes his way towards the luggage. Hicks still in play, and he's just trying to hold down into VIP. Here comes the first smoke grenade, though. No one is holding the diffuser, so Lestream not aware they have the diffuser down on South Balcony. Team Secret a little too over, uh, a little too cautious. It's gonna end up costing them one of their smoke grenades. 
I actually think Lestream knows the Diffuser is down. It's just they're, they're counting on Hicks to be able to play from this long range, and they have another MP5 as well right there, and I think that's exactly the plan from Lestream, in my opinion. They just need to wait it out. They've got so much utility at their disposal. There's not a lot of time left for Lackey to work with. He's very low on HP. This round is basically over at this point. There's 0% chance that Lackey is going to be able to evade every single member of LSC. Yep. That's and exactly what happens. So we go to 6-2 right now in favor of Lestream. Both of the matches today that I thought were going to be really close ended up being... Well, the first one was pretty one-sided. That was uh, Ents versus G2. This second one is setting itself up to be pretty much the same story, actually. It was 7 versus 3, pardon me, in the Ents G2 matchup. This one right now, 6-2. We're one round away from 7-2 uh, or two rounds away from the same result we got in the first match of the day. And in matches that I didn't expect to be quite so one-sided. We'll see, though. Secret have been making a valiant effort to recover this. That last round, I think it was just the stream getting a little aggressive. And the first time the stream tried to get aggressive on their defensive round, it didn't work out great. They were rushing onto the south balcony. That that cost them, what, three, Attackers four members? No, three members. Put them in a really bad position moving forward. This time around, it worked out fantastic for the stream. This is going to be the 21st round of Coastline that we've seen today. And for the very first time, we have a penthouse theater defense. Oh, yeah, look at that. Remarkable how sharply this site has declined in play rate due to operator bans, due to Mira being missing, and due to new attacking lineups. Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing every other site, primarily uh, Bill uh, Billiards and um, Double Bar. Are you really calling it Bill? I don't know why you, I don't know why you don't like Bill so much, man. What's what's your problem with Bill Parker? It sounds awful. It's a name. Did you just? Does no. Everyone Bill. named Bill have a, an awful name. No, to that's that's. I'm saying that it sounds awful calling it a sight, Bill. Okay. All right. Call it billiards. Billiards. There you go. One of the more popular bomb sites. <laughs> I called it billiards. Remember, Hookah, you just had to dig, Parker. Hookah was actually the least played site for a season or two of Coastline, and yeah. now it's surgeon. You know, there's been a huge resurgence here in the way it plays. That was back in the kitchen era, wasn't it? That was actually the penthouse. Was penthouse, the penthouse? Was the, penthouse was the most played with kitchen second, then double bars, and then Hookah. I thought, well, no, there was we one went from season. Penthouse to Kitchen to Double Bars, now Hookah. There was there was one season where Hookah was literally defended two or three times. Yeah, you know, it was a really odd season. That but, was it. Yeah. I mean, now we're looking at that for Penthouse, and we'll see what actually ends up happening. I mean, it's been such a long time, it feels like, since we've seen this site played. Um, so, could go either way. Could catch Secret off guard. Could be the downfall of the stream. Overall... Secret looks like they want to take their way into VIP, and Uno is going to be the person put in a position to try and deny access to VIP. He's doing his best right now to challenge on the North Balcony. Very exposed, just narrowly avoiding death five seconds ago. Leon will take down Rise, so it's a good start for Secret as they put themselves up a man. And uh, Uno still kind of out on an island by himself right now is essentially dead. As soon as, yep, CZ drones him out, he's going to get peeked and probably eliminated on the repel, maybe a double peek here, or they'll just let him linger and actually fall back. The fact that Uno got away without being punished is huge. So two things happened there. Rise died first as Alfama gets caught from Leon, who is on a tear with two kills to start off this round. Two things happened there. Number one, Rise fell right as the first logic bomb went off. So I don't know if the I don't know if the first logic bomb was intended to catch Rise, but they didn't really need it, so to speak. So they waste that logic bomb essentially and allow Uno to retreat and get away, and then nobody pushes from secret. So it's just a bit of a small a small waste on both of those counts. Alfama went down to Leon though. Leon does get traded off, so you lose him. And Secret finds themselves still with a major advantage. Aces will discover that there is a glass on the board and just narrowly escape. <laughs> not, a, not a lot of time left, though. You've still got one body repelled on these double windows, and Hicks just waiting so patiently, almost welcoming the challenge and waiting for somebody to come on board. He's going to go for a preemptive fire on the Lackey and take a tiny portion of his HP away. Diffuser going down. No plant denial. You've got the glass covering Hicks by oh. Steezy. So Steezy cut down. A run up from Uno Meister. As Alems is still there, the glass's reign of terror will eliminate Hicks. And Meepy is tagged into plant. Uno will need to go for the Diffuse. A great shot from Aces, though. 
And it's all up to LMs, who's nowhere near. He's got four seconds. He won't be able to grab the diffuser. This is a suspect call, and it will be Lestream winning with LMs realizing that he's not able to walk into the lion's den, retrieve the diffuser, and get a plant down in time. And Glass will find himself immobile inside of Hall of Fame. And Lestream picking up a massive win and a commanding victory over Secret 7-2. Jeez, what a round there. Lestream was out of it. Secret had control. The utility was entirely in Secret's favor. And then still, Secret somehow managed to lose it, all thanks to Hicks spraying through the smoke and taking out the defuse planter.